All right, this video is going to give you an overview of the general application settings that are available in SharePoint Central Administration. So if you go to Central Administration and click on General Application Settings, you're going to be shown this list of kind of bullet points here. External Service Connections, InfoPath Form Services, SharePoint Designer Search, and Content Deployment. So under External Service Connections, what that means is you can actually configure SharePoint to uh, any document or list item has the ability to send that to something. So if you want to be able to, you know, if you have a giant repository library, then you could set up a destination for it to go. So an example would be server, site, URL, and the official file ASMX, which would send it out to a web service. You can also send it to a library, a list, or even like a, a, a network location. All right, so you can do a send to option, which is a move, copy, move, move, and leave a link. Okay. So those are the send to connections. Every option, every list has an has the ability to send it to something. Oops. Configure document conversions. SharePoint has document conversion services available, and certain ones like Word to PDF, you'll probably need to get a third party add on. I'm not aware of any, I could be wrong, that are there for, um, uh, you know, some, you know, a Word document to a PDF, all that, I, I, you might have to download one. But you can enable document conversions for the web application and the site collection underneath it. So what it lets you do is do info path form to web page, so it's XML to HTML, Word document to web page, Word document with macros to uh, web page, and XML to web page. That's all this lets you do um, out of the box, but you can add different converters that allow you to do that, um, like PDF or any other file formats you want to use. So that's where you configure the settings for that. If we go back, the next bullet point is InfoPath Form Services. On my Power User blog, I have a, a demonstration of changing a, a form with InfoPath, and this is where you control the administrative settings of that. It's under General Application Settings. Uh, manage form templates is right here and what this does is um, these are templates that are already set up for the built-in workflows and the built-in um, forms that users have to fill out like collecting signatures workflow the uh, review publishing review approval all these other ones these are all templates that are built into SharePoint you can upload a form template and you can see that what it's associated to what category it's in so that's all the manage. Um, crap, where did it go? I lost my place. It's around here somewhere. Here we go. Let me close these other ones out. So that's what lets you uh, manage the InfoPath form templates. You can configure the InfoPath form services here once this loads and that lets you basically go in and configure the services for that whether you want to embed SQL authentication allow you these are all the options you have for those upload form template is is basically when you go to manage form templates and you have the option to upload one this is the page it takes you to so you can upload a saved info path form template to SharePoint and have it stored in SharePoint to be used data connection files are what um, are the connections that InfoPath uses to connect to within the form. So if you have a master Excel spreadsheet or an Access or SQL database, or even an OLDB connection that you want to connect your InfoPath forms to, this is where you would upload those data connection files. The InfoPath Forum Services Web Service Proxy is a proxy for the service application. And that basically lets you connect this uh, this instance of InfoPath form services, uh, it lets you use the proxy for data connections for these forms and web services. That's all it is. SharePoint Designer is the next big bullet point here. And what that is, SharePoint Designer is the program that lets you do um, highly administrative tasks in SharePoint. And it also lets you create lists, libraries, workflows, um, data connections, external lists, all that stuff, without having to use the interface of the web browser. But this is where you configure the settings for that. 
Um, you can choose to disable it entirely. You can enable detaching the pages. You can enable customizing and managing the website URL structure. Customizing master pages is for users that want to go in and change the branding or the look and feel of the site. And you have to do that through those master pages. So those are the settings for SharePoint Designer. Farm Search Administration, this is the kicker. And we're going to do a couple of videos on search alone because it's one of the bigger issues in SharePoint. Uh, getting search to work, making sure you've got the right results that you're getting from your result sources. Um, that's, that's probably the biggest thing I hear about on most of the forums is getting SharePoint search to work correctly and work the way that you want it to. And this takes you to the search administration page. We'll get into that later, but that's how you get to it. Crawler impact rules. These can be used to adjust the load that the crawler applies to content sources. So um, basically, if you have a lot of stuff and you don't have a very powerful system, you want to lower the resources allocated to the crawler. And that's where you set that up here. You can add rules. You know, If you don't want it to do a certain thing during a certain hour of the day, then there you go. Content deployment is the next one. So content deployment paths and jobs. I'll show you this link. And if you're confused and some of this looks intimidating, don't worry. Some of these I don't even use, but again, we're doing an overview to make sure when you look at this, you know what they do and where they go and how they work within SharePoint. I'm going to go ahead and click some of these in another tab so that we can have those load while we wait for this to load because this video is going to be long enough as it is. I'll pause it, wait till it comes up. Well, the other tabs have opened up already, so I'm going to go to those and come back to the content deployment paths and jobs. Content deployment settings, this basically lets you set up whether you want to, uh, all the options related to that. So you can accept incoming deployment jobs, the server you want to use to manage those, just basically all the options that revolve around content deployment in SharePoint. And then content deployment object status, this is where you can put in the URL of content that you're waiting to be deployed and see the status of it. So we're still waiting on that other one to come up and we'll see how long that's going to take. And it's, it's taken its sweet time, um, so we'll just I'll just give you a brief overview. That's where you configure the paths for content deployment and the jobs associated to that. So really, I don't ever use this portion of it, but there might be some organizations or maybe the organization you work for uses that. But that's really all there is to it. It's not much. And these are just settings. You're not actually configuring and, and deploying content from central administration. So that's it for the overview. I hope that was informative. Be sure to check out our other videos and uh, I'll go into, uh, I'll especially have one for search, but I'll do future videos on actually administ uh, the administration duties revolving around a lot of these items we're going over. So be sure to check out our next video and thanks for checking us out.